Hello, my friends. It is Laura Ward here in role play. And as you can see, I'm playing the role of a bunny. But this class is not about playing roles so much as about rolling on the floor and moving around, finding fluid movement, micro movement in your system. If you are following this stuff and you are watching my channel and getting something out of this, please like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, so I'm in this bunny suit today because it's like my happy inside place and it's freezing here. Um, but the thing I wanna talk about is going yin, going inside, going yin. And part of the reason I'm saying this is because that's sort of the direction that the Wild Empress Coven has decided to take this work. This, we're doing a event on Friday, this Friday, the 14th of January, 19, 19, 2022. And it's about going in, going in, so that we can discern when we're shining the light, where we want to shine the light, what we want to shine the light on. And I've been doing some really deep meditations uh, following the alchemy of breath work, which is really pretty intense work. And depending on how, let's say, free your system is, it can just like really go through it. And... Um, which I don't really recommend for most people. I like it's, I do recommend it for people that have done a lot of body work already. But the thing that keeps coming up for me while I'm in those meditations, which can like are about 40 minutes long, is this need to really heal the left side of my body. This need to tune into what's going on in the left side. And often traditionally left side is looked at as the more feminine side, the yin side. I will say that also, Sometimes the yang side really comes up too. But for me, it's not about healing the yang, it's about accepting the yang. But with the yin, it's very much about healing the yin. And if we look at our culture, I think that, that's a lot. <laughs> to, <laughs> to, I think that's really in the culture. So let's actually start today with um, one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. And the idea of actually just softening those places. So culturally often people don't wanna have a soft belly or they're stealing themselves so that there's no soft heart. But if we tune into the sort of fluid biomorphic nature of being human, then finding softness in our heart and finding softness in our belly can be a really, um, sustainable way of being human in ourselves. So I'm gonna add a sound to this. I'm gonna actually start with some sighs. So it can be a big inhale or a double inhale. Ha ah, with a ha. Ah. And I want to think of like, the image that comes to my mind is like when a little kid has fallen or something's happened and they're really amped up and just ha, ah, the need to drop down into that ha ah, and let go of maybe some sound, let go of some of that upregulation, ha, ah, letting go of some of maybe the air quality and tuning down into the earth and the water. Ha, ah, just letting that out a few times. And as I make the sound myself, I notice like, Ah, I noticed the sense of movement and spaciousness in my upper chest and lungs, but it isn't a spaciousness that needs to open up and come out. It's a very internal spaciousness. So just inviting you to play with ah, sighing, letting out sound and finding spaciousness. And then just for the two in the room, I want to also introduce you to Michael, who comes to a lot of my meditation classes and is also a movement teacher and just a kind heart human. So, uh, and as I'm hawing, I'm letting myself micro move. I'm letting my spine free up. And this is my image that's just coming to me right now. It's like the snake and the snake charmer, the snake coming out and the charmer singing the song. Ah, so allowing like your inner fluid snake, even that animal body to start to dance, to start to have some spaciousness, to, to start to have some space for expression. So we're tuning into the internal 
slowing it down and inviting in this sense of fluid biomorphic intelligence to come online in whatever way feels most nourishing right now. You can continue to sigh or if you're ready to take it to another level, let's go to the theta breath, which is an, a continuum breath. It's a continuum sound. And that is a soft hiss, like a soft And you could think of it just like a tiny little release of the air. So a gentle release of the breath. And just tuning in to see what that brings up for you. Letting yourself move in any way that feels good, delicious, nourishing. And the invitation is to allow any kind of holding patterns or any kind of stuckness to sort of crack and crumble away or maybe to melt away. But right now I feel like some of that crustiness, it just needs to like fall away. And when I move in small fluid movement, that stuff just kind of falls away and disappears. And maybe paying attention to the midline and, and the two sides of your body. And just tuning in to seeing, I know um, Terry mentioned her knee and I have been doing all that work with the left side of my body. And I read this thing by another one of my pole sisters who's an older woman also. And she, when I say older, I mean over 50, which isn't even older. But she also said the same thing about healing the left side. And it was weird because I had just had this massive left side meditation. And I was like, oh God, all this stuff. And this may be stuff that for me or for you, maybe stuff that you haven't paid attention to, or you've been like, yeah, there's that. But and it could be on your right side or your left side, but just inviting yourself in to really shine the light of loving kindness and awareness on any parts of your bodies of your body that feels like it can use that. And I'm gonna take it down to the floor from here and bring this into the floor. You can stay seated. You can also go to all fours. So really letting whatever position feels right for you, stay in that position for as long as you need to. All of this is for you to take at your own rate, but I'm feeling the need to sort of move things. Another thing I, I would like to suggest in this time is that if you feel like you need some hands-on touch in an area, listen in and just take that. Yeah, so immediately right now I'm feeling the left side of my neck. And you know, it makes me think of my expression. And like, I can be a very hard sort of direct person. Are there places where I need to soften and become more yin in my expression, more gentle, so that I can really tune my tissue to what I'm saying and how I'm expressing in the world. Which isn't, there's not this great need to change who you are, but just tuning into, is there anything that maybe isn't serving you? and inviting curiosity in like, hmm, what, what might be different? How can I engage with that awareness that's arising in me or that sensation or that tightness in a way that is kind, gentle and nourishing? I also wanna give you permission to let your body move, let your nervous system free up in any way that feels useful right now. So like right now I'm feeling this thing with my lower lip and it's like, I have to let it kind of 
move around. So you're allowed to look weird. You're allowed to feel weird. And also to know that if anything gets too far out there and you need to come back to something that feels more normal or more sustainable or more like you, then just get up and walk around, do a cat cow, do something that's familiar movement to you. Because in this work, we can get very sort of, by diving deeply in, it can take us sort of far out. So allowing yourself to regulate in whatever ways you need to. And I'm gonna be quiet for a few minutes and let us all just explore trusting the intelligence of your own biomorphic system. Really trust your need for either tiny, tiny, almost imperceptible movement or really big movement and allow yourself to go with whatever's showing up. You could even ask your body or ask your system if there is something that you should know or if there's something that the wisdom of your own intelligent body mind wants you to know to bring to the surface to the conscious level. So if there's anything in there in that under the surface part of your body in the subconscious or in the tissue that wants to come out, just open up to that idea. Maybe asking may be listening. One of the biggest things to let go of here is the idea that there's a right or a wrong. And then the other thing is sort of offer yourself the capacity to let go of the control, knowing that you can always come right back into it. But if you want the body to sort of unfold and unravel some of this stuff in its own intelligent way, Sometimes you gotta let the mind soften and the control center soften, allow the fluidity to bubble up or allow the expression to move through you. Give yourself permission to take the practice for yourself. You're not practicing for me. You're not practicing for somebody else. It's just for you. It's the gift for you.
You can also allow yourself to try different sort of positions of your body to work with whatever you're experiencing. Like if you shift onto your belly or onto your side or into an all fours position, it's gonna shift where the water is in your body. So it might just shift the whole experience. So invite that in if that's interesting. If you're really happy where you are, always just feel free to stick with the exploration that you're in. But if there's curiosity to go somewhere else, let yourself do that too. One thing I, I've been thinking about a lot, and that is in terms of movement or when we've learned a lot of systems of movement, there's a lot of rules that we learn about how we're supposed to move or look while we're doing things. So my invitation is to just break every rule. Find your own set of rules for today that may be very different than tomorrow. Every day is a different day in your body. And as we work with these practices, we're just layering in the intelligence. It may look very different from time to time, or even from second to second, from day to day. Giving yourself a vast array of possibilities to, to connect with this moment in your body. So many possibilities. So working towards choosing and discerning the one that really feels the best to you, that feels good, that's delicious, that's interesting. When things are interesting and we're curious, it just allows our whole awareness to, to zoom right into that. It can take us out of time and just into experience. So inviting it yourself into this sort of just pure sensation experience and tuning back into that yin quality, that inner fluid, receptive, vast, spacious quality. Yeah, as I work with that, almost always, I, there's something about my left leg and my left hamstring in through my body that gets going. It may be very different for you. The left side of our body does more work in the lymphatic uh, department. So our whole, our left side is working with like three quarters of our body while our right side, the lymph drainage is just one quarter, that upper quadrant. So yeah, it's, it's that detoxing capacity of the lymphatic system. On the yin side, the unseen thing that we often don't even know is happening. And inviting yourself in your processing or in your process to imagine that what we're doing here is really just tuning into like the fertile soil, the already, com the compost, the stuff that the next, next year is gonna grow from. So we're not even planting the seeds, <laughs> we're just adding in, we're processing the, the compost, we're mucking around in the muck, in the murk. 
<laughs> right? It doesn't need to look good in there. It can be really messy. I read this book a while ago. I think it was by Lisa C. And it was about the Korean women who dove for the riches of the sea and they could dive in the water and stay for a really long time. I can't remember there's a name for them and this is the name of the book. But in part of it, she was talking about her life growing up and that they lived with the, the toilet was over the pigsty and the pigs would just eat the poop. And then later on, eventually they would eat the pigs and the pigs would eat the poop. And it's like this cycle of life, which is like, we wanna just not be afraid of that dark mucky stuff. Right. And then eventually they got rid of that and they had regular toilets. And then like, it's not the system and the cycle has shifted. It's not the same anymore. I'm probably bastardizing that story. It might've even been from a different book, but I'm pretty sure it's from that one. So good. Yeah, they were cold water diving too. Like, I think at one point during the war, like the Russians had them there diving. So what's, yeah, we're diving into the ocean of our body. And playing in our, and with our shit. Yes, exactly. And playing, think about that. Babies do that, right? There's a point where they're like, oh, I did this. I want to touch it. Uh -huh. right? <laughs> and also, if you compost, do you know how stinky that pile of compost can get, you know, in the, in the part where it's starting to rot and ferment? So you're invited to be in the stinky, slathering it up. I guess that's a big, huge part of it is being able to accept that, accept those, those darker processes, creating space to be a human, not trying to negate or erase these other parts of us, but allowing them to be there and even shining some loving kindness on them. Somebody, I just heard somebody talking about their inner critic. And it's like, you have to get rid of your inner critic. And it's like, no, you have to learn to love your inner critic. You have to give them some space too. All of these people are inside of us. And the ones that are the loudest are often the ones that need the most gentleness and softening. They need the most cracking off of the crusty love patterns. and acceptance yeah <sighs> so i'm going to give us like uh five minutes of music to play around in i can i'm, I'm together enough to even remember to share my audio <sighs> Okay, I'm going to turn it down a little bit and bring it up as it goes. There we go. Is that loud enough? Can you hear it?
to a close. And just giving your system a few breaths to really process anything. Maybe in stillness, maybe you're still moving, whatever feels right for you. And I still feel this thing in my bottom lip. I'm going to pause the recording. So the music was from Jeff Gersh. If you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe. And I am about to start a Patreon. So that would be fantastic if you feel like being a Patreon supporter too.